At Villarice Florist, we deliver the magic of flowers seven days a week to the North Shore and South Shore in the New Orleans area. Whether it's for birthday parties, baby celebrations, Villarice provides colorful floral displays for all. With a store full of fresh cut flowers, exotic tropical flowers, orchids, roses, and even fruit baskets, our goal is to make your vision a reality. Villarice Florist, proudly serving Louisiana since 1969. Dave Niet Insurance Agency. Auto, home, flood, business, 504-556-0809. Dave Niet, insagency.com. For over 48 years, Southern Tires and Auto Repair has provided services across the New Orleans metro area. Southern Tires offers a range of tires for all vehicles and ATVs. We also have a full suite of auto repair options, including brake repair, rim repair, custom exhaust, steering and suspension, tire siping, and so much more. Southern Tires and Auto Repair, 2550 Hickory Avenue in Metairie. CNC Drugs is a family-owned pharmacy that's been serving Southeast Louisiana for over 50 years. Whether you need help taking care of an elderly family member, a growing child, or even a pet, CNC provides patient-centered care for your entire family. CNC Drugs, large enough to serve you, small enough to know you. Locations in Mandeville and Araby. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Inside New Orleans Sports. I'm your host, Eric Asher, and I, on a beautiful, spectacular day here in New Orleans. It actually is winter-like. Mm -hmm. uh, by the weekend, will be summer-like, which is mm -hmm. pretty typical for this time of year uh, here in the city. But again, the first day of December, and of course, uh, we're happy to have Sean Vazan of Fox 8 Sports to break down Tulane, LSU, Saints. We'll talk uh, about the uh, SWAC uh, championship. We'll talk about also what's going on this, uh, with uh, with SLU in the uh, FCS um, uh, playoffs. And, of course, Pelicans all on tap today here on Inside New Orleans Sports. Sean Vazan joins us from Fox 8 Sports. Sean, welcome to the show, my friend. Thanks for having me. One time of year, huh? It, well, it's a busy time of year, yeah, isn't it? I mean, again, when everything kind of converges, and look, we yeah. don't, you know, we, it's some, we don't even get to college basketball on this program, right? Okay, till we really kind of till football kind of teeters out, yeah. right? Because there's just not enough time, even in the hour, to get to everything. Yeah. But the, everything kind of going at one time, and for you know a guy like you that has to you know cover everything, uh, you're you're back and forth, and of course. You'll be on a plane soon, going to Tampa to um, uh, to be there for the game on Monday. Yeah, yeah, we'll be flying out. I'll be flying out, I guess, Sunday this week because mm -hmm. of the Monday night game. We have a bunch of stuff Monday uh, leading up to the game. We have a pregame show, we have the tailgate show, we have a postgame show. So yeah, we're doing all that stuff. Part of a long lineup of shows right. that we have Which at Fox Eight. It, it's easy to find them though. Aren't yeah, every night, Fox Eight at ten thirty, something's on. Uh, yeah. If you're watching a live broadcast tonight, it'll be the final bet at ten thirty. Mm -hmm. The Friday night show. Fox A Football Friday, getting close to the end now. Yep. Uh, Final Four in uh, each each division, and then uh, every night except Saturday, and then right. uh, Sunday. This week no tailgate, but we'll have the final play at 10:30, and then Sun uh, Monday we would normally have Black and Gold Review with Deuce Juan and myself, but this week obviously it's going to be uh, leading up to to the Saints Monday night game, which can be seen on Fox 8. Mm -hmm. uh, our pregame show and our postgame show. Tuesday will be Black and Gold Review, but it's normally overtime, and then Wednesday. We have game plan at 1030. So I think that's the entire week there. So just set your DVR 1030 on Fox 8. There's a strong chance you'll see a show uh, well, about local and, sports. And, and, and a great show. I, I got the DVR set every, every mm -hmm. night, 1030. Uh, you know, you got, and of course, the high school playoffs that are, that, that, yep. are, that, are, that are rolling as well. Just a quick note for a couple teams before we really get into Tulane deep, LSU deep, and, and of course, the Saints at Bells. I want to graduate. SLU mm -hmm. has made it to the second round of the SCF playoffs. Uh, they will take on Sanford. Uh, Sanford is, um, I believe, they only had one loss, Georgia, this year. That's it. Uh, and uh, they, they will uh, be in Birmingham. That is a 2 p.m. kick 
on Saturday afternoon. Self was an excellent coach. He mm -hmm. could literally, again, he could be a quarterback coach in the NFL. He's that good. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, he's got a great team going. This is a big one because they've never really been able to get them past the second round. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully they, they do that this weekend. Also, again, um, they beat Idaho last week, uh, 45 to 42. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Southern has now, after the Bayou Classic, beating Grambling, uh, they are now taking on Jackson State. Southern 7-4, and four, Jackson State 11-0 and 0, uh, in the SWAC Championship. That's in Jackson. This may be Deion Sanders' last game at Jackson State. A lot of uh, uh, reports out there that he would be going to uh, one of the, one of the uh, 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 Power 5 uh, teams. So we'll see how, the, how that kind of plays out. Um, Jackson State uh, blew out um, uh, Southern the first time around. So we'll see again how, the, how that kind of plays out. And, of course, the, um, um, the American Athletic Conference Championship is on Saturday. UCF uh, coming to town to take on Tulane in a home game. We'll get to that in a moment. But the biggest story all week, and look, Sean, I want to I lay this out early because you get the flack. I get the flack from a lot of Tulane fans. We don't get the, we don't get the coverage. My show on Monday and Tuesday, the first hour of my show, led with Tulane the entire hour, okay, mm -hmm. on, on the first hour. Uh, this Tulane is winning. They are relevant. So they are going to get the media attention in this town. And they've gotten it. <laughs> I, I, I told Coach Lester a long time ago over at UNO. We were doing a remote over at Katie's, and I said, turn to Coach Lester and I said, congratulations on well, this when they were making the running NCAA. I said, you know. A lot, a lot of people complain about not getting media attention. I said, there's so much to cover on a daily basis in this town before, between high school, collegiate, and the pros that if you're not winning, it's hard for you to get coverage. Mm -hmm. But if you're winning, you're going to get the coverage. Yeah, yeah that's it. And I, so it, that's always going to be – it, it's always been sort of a, a thorn in their side is, is the, the coverage or lack thereof. But this week, they, they, they've been front and center. They dominate. I mean, the Willie Fritz uh, news that broke, I mean, the day that it broke that he was staying, I thought earlier that day he was gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the text that I was getting, uh, the information I was reading, the situation that I was looking at when you looked at Tulane, you looked at Georgia Tech, right. I thought, I mean, Tulane always loses out in this scenario, right. but they didn't this uh, time around. Right. So, hey, kudos to Tulane. I mean, right. I, I'm, not, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm no, saying seriously. absolutely. You held yeah. on to a great one, uh, a great one that had clearly had – very real interest in that Georgia Tech job. Right. It didn't happen for whatever reason. Who knows what was the final nail in the coffin for him not taking that job? Right. Who cares? Right. He's back at Tulane. He's coaching his team in the championship game, the conference championship game, something we have been calling them out for for the last four or five years. they got to get to that. Right. They've got to get to the conference championship level, and here they are. And for them, a lot like LSU, a year ahead of schedule because next year the AAC is going to be uh, significantly uh, uh, easier for Tulane to be able to traverse uh, in football, really in all sports, really kind of the big four moving into the Big 12. Let's talk about the situation. Willie Fritz, 41 and 45 at Tulane, 62 years old. Um, when this thing broke, there was still, again, some folks in Atlanta, because I went in and did the research immediately, um, that were part of the Georgia Tech alumni that were not in favor of Willie Fritz uh, taking the job because of the, his, his record and because of his age. Uh, they were all, again, behind Brent Key, former player, and a guy who was the interim coach at Georgia Tech. Ultimately, he gets the job. But one of the things that, again, that, that, really, um, that really struck me was, uh, you know, why Willie Fritz didn't take the job, which, again, is something we've seen, you know, uh, with, with Mac Brown. We've seen it with, Tom, with Tommy, Tommy Bowden. Bowden. Uh, you know, I mean. The baseball coach uh, appears a few right, years right. ago. I mean, okay. it, you, I mean, just in, when a Tulane coach gets a better offer, they go. They're gone. They go. They're gone. Um, there has something that has to change at Tulane now. And I'm wondering, again, with him staying, if there were concessions that were made, not just in a contract situation, but also for facilities. Sean, you and I talk about it all the time. It's an arms race now in, in college football, and really in college athletics across the board. Every single player is a free agent every single year. NIL is big in terms of the collectives. How much money can you put together to be able to make sure, again, that you're getting money to these players? You know, on top of the, the again, the, you know, the high tuition over at Tulane, which, again, is, look, it's a, it's a great thing to have, that, to have that education. But a lot of these guys are looking for an opportunity to go to the pros. So, you, you, again, you're having to deal with that. And then you're having to be able to deal with, again, what are the opposing teams putting together, whether it's in your conference or out of conference, in terms of amenities for the players, uh, the ability to have a weight room uh, that is that is state of the Art, indoor practice facility, a, a student athlete performance center, which we've seen, you know, again, a lot of places go. I want to take Georgia Tech for a moment, throw some numbers out to you. I did this for you yesterday on the radio show. 
The entire athletic budget for Tulane is $31.8 million. The, 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 uh, the, athletic, uh, the football athletic budget uh, is $11.4 million, almost $11.5 million. Okay, they lost $411,000 last year. Okay, so, so they, were in the, in, in, they were in the red last year. Um, football for, for Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's uh, uh, budget is $86 million for athletics. It is $27.2 million for, um, uh, for, for football. They were $1.3 million in the black last year. They have an indoor practice facility. Uh, again, they, they also have a student athlete performance center with a players' lounge, meeting spaces, football only strength conditioning area, weight room, etc. That's building that's being built as we speak on on the back of Bobby Dodd Stadium. Um, when you look at Georgia Tech, they were paying their coach 3.3 million dollars, and, and he had a had a 1.9 million dollar um, uh, bonus. Um, uh, oh, sorry, 1.3 million dollar bonus. Willie Fritz makes 1.9 million dollars at Tulane. Something's got to change here. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering again, not just well again staying to be able to, to coach his team in, in the AAC championship and possibly again a berth in the um, Cotton Bowl, but when you look at a Power Five team now in a Power Five conference, a team that when I was growing up was on the same level as Tulane. Both were, in, were, were original SEC teams. Both were independents. Uh, both were in the Metro Conference, and then of course Georgia Tech goes to the ACC. Tulane goes to Conference USA when the Metro kind of broke off into that. And of course now again you, you, you're in, you're now of course in the American Athletic Conference, but they have put the money into their uh, in, into their programs so that that again they can compete at a Power Five level. Looking at just the numbers right now, Tulane can't compete. And I'm surprised that Willie Fritz did not take this job. You just made the case for him to leave, and he didn't do it. He didn't do <laughs> he it. He didn't do it. Um, Got to be more on the table. Got to be more there uh, that meets the eye. Got probably more there in terms of offer. Fritz able to take it, take the job. Was there some maybe some kind of... Uh, back out from either side, whatever, who cares? Tulane got the guy. But nonetheless, you just laid it all out. And I'm here to tell you, Tulane, I have no idea what the other AAC facilities right. look like. Right. Tulane has some work to do. Yes. When, just, when, just, when I just look at their facilities, and I've been around a lot of, a lot of right. facilities, I, they need to upgrade. They need an indoor. Uh, they need a bigger weight room, probably a football-only weight room. When you talk about the size of a football right. team, a football program, it's over 100 kids, mm -hmm. plus coaches and everything. You probably need your own spot. Um, yeah, uh, and then you have to deal with the – it used to just be put money into facilities. Well, right. now, somehow, some way, you got to figure out a way to, to start this NIL collective right. thing, which with Tulane, it's – does it go f as far I, I, when you talk about a, a school that's higher tuition? You talk about like, do you need more? How, how do you get, how do you get these guys the numbers they deserve? Oh, by the way, don't think for a second some bigger schools have looked at Tulane and right. saw some players and said, I wonder if they're going to be in the portal now because we could pay them a lot more than Tulane can. No so a whole lot of factors working against Tulane, and yet they held on to right. their guy. So I'm with you. E. There had to have been some kind of commitment, not just we're going to double your salary. Right. I mean, that's always the easiest thing to do, right. frankly. Right. Uh, it's got to be something in way by way of facility upgrade, NIL. NIL collectives. A, a collective where there's – a strong commitment to an infusion of cash coming. Not yes. just we're going to do it, right. but there's going to better be some signed checks somewhere. I agree, and, and it has to be across the board as well. I, I did the uh, research also on the American Athletic Conference. Tulane is in the bottom half of the American Athletic Conference in terms of what, what they spend on athletics, in terms of what they spend on football. Uh, Willie Fritz is, is, it, is, in, the, is in, the, in, in the bottom half of what he's getting paid uh, to be the head coach at Tulane. Mm -hmm. If Tulane is serious about athletics, and I've talked about this my entire life, okay, my entire Everyone, my everywhere. entire life, <laughs> I've been true. talking about this. <laughs> but if, if this doesn't move the needle for Tulane, nothing will. But he stayed, so so maybe that does that well, the, make you more optimistic I, that they have. I mean, that no, they will it makes be? me think that there were concessions here. That again, that again, he was able to leverage Tulane into not that's, just money for himself. Little, if that's what it took, so be it. Right. But I, I think it's coming. Now. I think it has uh, to. It has to. In today's world, if they, unless they want to be in the AAC and then they, they, they want to, uh, you know, they don't want to be a, uh, at least a candidate for the next round of conference expansion, they have to do that. And now it's crystal clear on why they were not invited to the Big 12. When you look at the budget, when you yeah. look at everything that's right. there, why, why, again, the, the, why there were four teams and not five teams that ultimately were, were invited over to the Big 12, and Tulane wasn't, wasn't even in the mix, okay, because of the athletic budget, because of the commitment to athletics, and what's coming. You have to be able to compete with NIL. You have to be able to compete with facilities, and, and believe me, 
if Willie Fritz is 42 and not 62, he's gone. Yeah, there's no doubt. And I, I think it was so funny before the, the word got leaked about Fritz going to Tech, I remember even thinking, you know, normally when Tulane has a, has a year like this, the coach is gone, and you, you right. normally hit about the coach. And at that point, you had. And I was like, man, Willie was a great hire because he's a little bit older, mm -hmm. just enough of a resume to build, but yes. not enough, not an attractive of a resume for another school to come calling. Well, sure enough, they came calling. Right. Um, and this probably his last shot at a Power Five school. If you I, want to I be would honest. agree. It has I mean, to be. All, all signs pointed to take that job, Willie, right. and yet he did not, and he stayed. So, yeah, I, again, a huge win. Right. Huge win for Tulane, but. What did they have to do to get that win? Because Willie Fritz is a smart guy, and he knew his position. And it's all for the good of Tulane, honestly. Right. It just now, now he kind of forced their hand right. a little bit. And the fact that he's back, maybe there's a little hope uptown that right. they're going to do things that you're supposed to, like a Georgia Tech. There's no reason why you can't be a Georgia Tech. Have you, have you ever seen Georgia Tech? Yeah. It's just like Tulane in the sense that you drive downtown Atlanta, you make a turn, oh, wow, there's Georgia Tech right. Stadium right in the middle of right. everything. Two lanes right in the heart of Uptown. Yes. I mean, it's the exact same style they, of school. They, were, they they came up the same way. Right. Like I said, original SEC, it went original Metro. I mean, again, they, they were on the same tier. They were independents. Yeah. When I was growing up, they were the same, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, but, but again, now there's a completely different with the commitment thing that they made to athletics. It's, it is a academic school, mm -hmm. just like Tulane. Okay, so there's no difference there. This, right. is a, this is what Tulane should be striving to be. And this is one of the reasons why they weren't in the mix. Look, uh, Rick Dixon was an incredible fundraiser mm -hmm. when it came to facilities. We're going to find out who Troy Dannon is now. Because I'm telling you, it's not just football. Uh, you know, Ron Hunter might have a good basketball season this year. That arena needs help as well. And it would be know? nice to get Tulane baseball back on track Absolutely. Well. It would be okay. nice to get that back Absolutely. on track. Absolutely. But... To me, this needs to be a signal to Tulane alumni, which in who have deep pockets, businesses in the city that, that again support Tulane, and the Tulane fan base that if you're truly serious about athletics, there's no more one foot, a little bit of toe yeah. in the pond here. If you're going to you complain about in media now. coverage, you better be, in, be, be being involved in, in, in when it comes to supporting the program via funding or whatever the case may be. I mean, look, they did a nice job with attendance this year. Absolutely. I, mean, I, I thought it could have been a little better for some better, games. Especially but, the UCF game. Yeah, especially for that game. But nonetheless, they did a, a better job. Right. Um, keep that momentum going. Right. And hopefully they can. We'll see what happens. Uh, this, this portal window coming up, I, th that concerns me a little bit. Well, um, again, not so much now because Fritz is staying. If Fritz would have gone, I'm telling you right now, yeah. what's stopping Michael Pratt from going to Georgia Tech and right. playing the senior right, year there? Exactly, right. Okay, what's 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 stopping again? You know, he's already Spears is already going to go pro, yeah. right? So again, what's stopping him again? Cherry picking all the players right. that that again the young players that they've been developing that go that go to Georgia, still happen. Georgia Tech. It could still happen with no, NIL money. No, it's it could right. Still it still could. So, which is why Tulane's on the clock yeah. there. And now, with all that said. Congratulations to this team. Yeah, I now, mean, now that we've gotten through all that, yes, but, but, absolutely. That, this is real. Yeah. This is real. I mean, again, they dodged a bullet yeah. with, 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 with Willie Fritz no, uh, not, not leaving. What, 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 a, what, a, what a great season it's been. Mm -hmm. And to be able to cap it off, having a championship game at Yeoman, and to be able to have a chance, first of all, what they did last week against Cincinnati, 30 was a 32-game win, home winning streak. And uh, even, again, when they got down, came right back at them. You just had the feeling that, that – over the last five, six years, Cincinnati has been more has been a dominant team in that yeah. conference and much better than Tulane. You saw the gap close this yeah, year. Yeah, I've always it's funny because that job's obviously open now. I've always right. it could change by the time we finish this, this show. But I always felt like that was the best non Power Five job in America. That and maybe Houston. Those yep. two, those two programs because I think if you win there, you're going to get the the respect you deserve. Mm -hmm. I think it was Cincinnati in the playoff a couple of years mm -hmm. ago, or maybe was it last year? Uh, now that's now they're going to be a Power Five school. Right. Obviously, they're going to the uh, was it the Big, Big 12. Twelve? So along with Houston, incredible, incredible season for Tulane and they got the break they needed they lost to UCF they caught the break with UCF right. losing so incredible uh season for Tulane um defense was real offense came uh playmaker and Spears a gutsy veteran leader and Michael Pratt uh, it all came the line of scrimmage which I've always talked about yes. Tulane the line of scrimmage held up transfer portal held up and you had the bodies you had the depth and it all kind of manifested itself into a beautiful season uptown right. you know you you know, you said ahead of schedule. I agree, but no one accounted for last year's dip. So to me, right. I think they're on schedule. Right. I think last year's dip was an outlier. I think mm -hmm. this is probably if they were kept the same trajectory from two years mm -hmm. ago. 
this is probably right where they right. should be. I say ahead of schedule because next year with the defections, Tulane is going to be the best team in the conference or one of the best yeah, teams okay. in the conference. Yeah, right. U University That's of fair. Texas San Antonio has a who is coming into the American mm -hmm. Athletic Conference next year has a bigger budget, Ooh. athletic and football budget. Texas again, than the, 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 Texas San Antonio. Yeah, right. Okay, uh, the, then Tulane. The, they've got to turn that around. With, the, with that said, this game. Um, is, is such a big game, not just for Willie Fritz and, 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 and the program, uh, but, but again, when you start looking at what it means uh, for, for Tulane athletics across the board. Uh, UCF, let's face it, they, out, they, they, they seem to, out, out, the speed of, the, of, of that team uh, was so different than what we saw with Tulane. Uh, I've heard Tulane players to a man this week talk about I missed this play. I missed that tackle. Yeah. I didn't do this. I should have. I should have been um, this more disciplined on this play. They know what they did wrong. A plus here is Plumley looks like he's got a hamstring injury, and of course that's a guy that ran all over LSU, right? Oh. And then he ran all over Tulane. So that may be a, again in Tulane's favor, but. I just feel like, and I said this on the radio show after they lost to UCF, if they get a chance to get them a second time, they're going to beat them. And I feel really confident they'll be the AAC champions when all things are said and done uh, at what, about seven, almost 7 o'clock on Saturday when this game ends. Yeah, I agree. I think this is an opportunity for Tulane. I really do. I think this is a chance to really flex it, really finish. Right. Finish this thing off strong. You had a weird week, a little bit of a roller coaster. You got your guy. He stayed. Let's finish the job. I think they can, especially if Plumlee can't play. Because right. that kid ran all over mm -hmm. LSU he in did. 2019. If you recall, uh, they kind of spotted LSU about 21 or 24 points. But the second half, it was oh. getting a little, wow, this kid is running all right. over LSU's defense. Now, they took the foot off the gas. And then almost to the wide receiver the And then they year. moved at it because they had Matt Corral. <laughs> right. So, yeah, um, that kid can play. And he can. he can play at the SEC level, so certainly we can play at UCF, which is another one of those schools that certainly has the resources that can be big. So, yes, I agree with you. And I, I truly believe this – this is this is Tulane's year. Yeah. So yes, I think they finished the job. Now, one thing we can we can we, we know from the first game, again, a lot of ex SEC players, former SEC players on that UCF team, which again means SEC speed, mm -hmm. SEC size. Okay, uh, but again, Tulane's uh, defense was was not what it was uh, throughout the the season against them in, in that game. Hopefully, again, they'll make the uh, adjustments there. And look. Uh, this uh, this is the last home game for for Spears, who again was the AAC Offensive Player of the, of the Year. This guy's a, he's, he's incredible. A, he really is. They're doing uh, it since high school, you know. And Fritz is as the AAC Coach of the Year, uh, and then an opportunity to go to the Cotton Bowl, right? Okay, and uh, maybe take on Penn State if they don't end up in the um, uh, in the Rose Bowl, but still to be in the Cotton Bowl, so much in front of this team, yeah. and the distraction is behind them now with Willie Fritz staying. Yeah, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I know they played BYU in '98 when they went 12 and up. What mm -hmm. bowl was that? Was that was, How, it, was no, that the Holiday Bowl? I think it was the Holiday Bowl. Okay. Well, what, was it Hawaii? I, I don't know. I ah, man, it, I wish it's on tip. Right. I, I can't think. of I'm sure there's two million people right. watching right now that, that could tell you right off the top of their head, but. To go to the Cotton Bowl, right? The Prestige. Oh, come on! Tulane in the Cotton Bowl. Well, I mean, is it 1934? Come on! I keep saying it. I mean, I mean what an opportunity ahead. Right. And and, and look, this is fantastic. Yeah. But you got to keep the momentum going, and yeah. that's one of the reasons why I brought up the budget. I brought up again what what, what Fritz is making, what they don't have in terms of the practice facility. You could say, well, they go to Saints practice I don't like facility that. until they yeah, want. That, no, no, so they got to get in a bus yeah. and they got to go to Saints facility yeah. to do that. You need one on campus, yeah. and you need that performance center because that's what these kids are looking for. Not just the money; they're looking for the amenities. And if the other guy across town can do it, can get it for them, or again across the next state, they're going to do it. Here's the other part. Willie Fritz has found something here. Again, in, in, in the transfer portal, these kids that, again, are from New Orleans, from Louisiana, mm -hmm. that head to other schools, they decide, again, they, they're either not making it there or they're homesick. There's a place for them at Tulane. Yeah. And that has been, again, a big reason why they're able to get over the hump this yeah, year. Yeah, so if you lose a few, maybe you gain a few. That, that always seems to happen. Um, the transfer giveth, the transfer uh, taketh yeah, away. You know, uh, so for yeah. them it gave it. Yeah, gave yeah. It this year. I mean, so yeah, ten players that that, that, that yeah, made a difference, yeah, and, and that's it, kudos to them for utilizing that to their benefit. Kudos to those players for understanding the opportunity at Tulane and make no mistake. Big reason why they're at where they're at right. where they're at right now is because of those transfers. So yeah, it's a, it's a double edged sword when you talk about that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think it's. It's, it's a good situation for mm -hmm. Tulane to be in. Hey, Jimmy Hymel, Tulane in the A block. Can you believe that? How about that? There you go. <laughs> All right. You're watching Inside New Orleans Sports. Uh, Sean Mazan is my guest. I'm your host, Eric Asher. We'll take a break here. We come back. We'll jump into LSU. We'll jump into the Saints. And also, we'll jump into the Pelicans, who are playing fantastic basketball right now. All that coming up after you hear from our underwriters. Stay tuned. Burke 
Burkhart's Air Conditioning, Heating and Refrigeration has been family owned and operated since 1989. Burkhart has energy efficient solutions and offers brands such as Mitsubishi ductless AC units and Amena, the only manufacturer with a lifetime unit replacement warranty. Burkhart's offers maintenance bundle packages that include servicing your AC, generator and tankless water heater. For more information on the services Burkhart's provides, visit acpromise.com. Burkhart's Air Conditioning, Heating and Refrigeration, providing comfort for life. Experiencing rough weather with a bad roof can be a nightmare. It doesn't have to be. Suburban roofing, because when it comes to roofing, there is a difference. Located at 3701 Iberville Street in Mid-City is Katie's Restaurant and Bar. Open seven days a week, Katie's offers daily specials for lunch, dinner, and Sunday brunch. Serving New Orleans cuisine such as fried shrimp platters, grilled redfish, and a fully stocked bar. And don't forget about our expanded event seating and local entertainment. Featured on the best of food networks, diners, drive-ins, and dives, Katie's Restaurant and Bar. Welcome back to Inside New Orleans Sports. I'm your host, Eric Asher. Sean Mazzana, Fox 8 Sports, is our guest. Uh, meanwhile, up in Baton Rouge, um, uh, they are uh, coming off of a, 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 really a loss that really cost them a lot. But... Again, they still have an opportunity with, again, having a, a chance to be in the SEC championship against, um, against Georgia, 3 p.m. kickoff in, in, um, uh, in Atlanta on Saturday. But let's go back to um, what happened on Saturday because everything was in front of them. Uh, they were fifth ranked in the nation. Uh, they, they had an opportunity. If they win that game, uh, even if they lose, they're, in a, they're probably in a um, New Year's Six Bowl. Uh, with the loss to Texas A&M, 38-23. Um, uh, uh, it dropped in the 14th in the college football playoffs, which I thought was a little bit punitive. Uh, yeah. I thought they deserved to be probably 10th. Yeah. But w the, 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 the voters made sure they weren't going to be able to sneak back in mm -hmm. if they beat right. Georgia, and they would have a four, uh, what, what, a, a three-loss team at that yeah, point uh, You know that would have been in the mix here. No, um, they, no would they have deserved it at that no, point. No, they would yeah. not have. What do you... It's hard to believe that, again, as, as disciplined as this team has been, that they overlooked a and M. I I was so surprised. A couple things. Be, be, because this was, their, this was their bowl game, yeah, right? I mean, this was a – they overlooked them, got a little cocky, not quite as good as the record said, although right. they okay. – you know. Um, and you would have thought that Arkansas game would have maybe kind of opened their eyes a little bit, a little farther back. Um, got a little cocky, overlooked a and M who I think is probably better than their record show. And, I, and honestly, I, I think Jimbo probably saved his job uh, with that yeah, victory. Yeah, probably. Um, and then, Although that bio was incredible. And huh? then, yeah, and then with the bio too, yeah. the, the two combined. And then, you know, you got get to the game, and it's it's kind of a, whoa, there came the play yeah. moment. And all of a sudden, you're sloppy with your fundamentals. You're, you're not making tackles, that which was is the something thing that, that, that really out. drove me insane and 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 then you know you, all of a sudden you're in a third quarter and you're in a dog fight and then you have a fumble and and and, and scoop and score and it's over um hey man it happens i think it goes to show you that they were playing above their head mm -hmm. they were playing with house money um and they got caught a little bit and brian kelly's will talk about the the energy the night before the game fine it, this was a week-long thing. It was a holiday week. They, they overlooked A&M. They did. They saw a wounded A&M team and thought they weren't going to show up, and guess what they did? Not just them. The f I couldn't believe how packed that stadium was oh, yeah. for, on the last, for a game with no impl right. implications. But it's LSU, them. though. It is LSU. Um, but, it, you know. There's a little hatred there between the A&M yeah, fans there is, and LSU. There is, especially the last time they played. Right. They were uh, two times ago in right. 18. But he, here, here's the thing. Nine and three. You just said that before the season. I would have taken it. Playing in the conference championship Come game, on. I would have taken Come it. Come on. The road, though, makes you a little disappointed. But the further away I right. get from the AM loss, the more I'm okay right. with the entirety of the season because you have a chance here. I mean, look, it's LSU, Georgia. Right. You can match up with them. You're not as good as them, but you can match up in any given Saturday. And if you get a couple breaks, go your way. Uh, then you got at least right. a punt. It's not like they're going to get rolled over. No. It's not like they're going to get run over. Um, I can recall in 2001, mm -hmm. when I was still a student at LSU. And, right. uh, 
you know, uh, Tennessee was heavily favored. Yes. They went in there, three-loss team, and, and Matt Malk. Right. And were able to beat Tennessee. Yep. So, you never know. Well, one of the big way, ways they'll beat him is if Jaden Daniels is healthy. He's been in a walking boot all week long. Again, hopefully that ankle is not um, – is not so severely injured that he doesn't have the mobility and the speed, the next gear that really, look, he glides when he runs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and that, because you know they're going to be going after that ankle. The other thing is, you mentioned the sloppy tackling on the defensive side of the ball, which was so uncharacteristic of this team this year. And also Perkins kind of disappearing. They have yeah. to find a way to be able to, to showcase him. Uh, that's on house. He's got to be able to showcase him each and every week. He's got to be a disruptive force. And in this game, you're not going to get away with sloppy fundamentals. You're not going to get away with that. You know what I'm saying? You're just you're not going to get away with uh, letting one one ball carrier right. carry your uh, run all over you and then not making tackles on the edge. You're just not going to be able to get away with right. that. You're not going to get away with sloppy play. You're not going to get away with fumbles and interceptions. You're gonna you're gonna have to play sound, disciplined football, and you're probably going to have to get a couple of breaks go your way in the right. opposite direction. Maybe they are a little undisciplined. Maybe right. they make a few extra mistakes. That's their path to victory. Right. Uh, in Jane Daniels' case. I am concerned that he can't go uh, because right. the running is part of his game. But I do think the running has been neutralized a bit because you're seeing teams dropping that extra mm -hmm. defender, basically playing two spies right. on him. They are, they are. Making him read the entire field. But there's more defenders back right. there than there are receivers. It just leads to massive indecision. And that's what you've seen the last two games. You mentioned something on the radio show yesterday about, again, not only not in the middle of the field uh, with Jaden Daniels, only, only really throwing to the edges. Short throws to the sideline. It's funny. Before I went on your radio show, I started looking at the the the, the, uh, the, the game again to see where right. the throws were. I got through the first quarter and a half. Every single throw was a short to medium throw to the sideline. You're going to take an eraser and just erase the middle of the field from, say, five yards down, right. seam to seam. That's got to get better. He's got – now, I don't know if you can change that right now. Right. Um, but I know Georgia has seen right. that. He, that. The middle of the field is basically non-existent right now. Um, and even that – you can somewhat get away with that in college football, but you're not even getting the ball vertical downfield on the sidelines, right. which has become an issue. Because against Ole Miss and Alabama, you were able to get downfield mm -hmm. a little bit on the sideline. But the last couple of weeks, it's just been short sideline throws. Right. I think they've got to figure out a way to overcome that. What was, what, was Joe, Joe, what was Joe Burrow? Joe Burrow was a guy that – He lived in the middle of the field. Down. Made he, the third read over the middle of the right. field better than any college football quarterback that I can remember. And that that dig route was there. If you look at – Bryce Young, he lives in the middle of the mm -hmm. field. C.J. Stroud, who I've been a little right. up and down with, but to me, that that's the difference. That, that, Can you work the middle of the field? Can you? Yeah, that that's pro. Right. That's that's and that's the thing holding him back. In the right, um, Brian Kelly's announced Jaden Daniels will play. Okay. Uh, again, Bernard Converse will play, and I believe it was Josh Williams. The guys put up on the screen as well. Okay. All three of those guys necessary. Well, there we go. Uh, yeah, so. yes, I would say I would yeah. absolutely agree that necessary. Yeah. You need yeah. all your dogs, yeah, all yeah. your big dogs yeah, all, all, uh, for this on, game. on the field. With that said. They don't turn the ball over. They play good defense, and and you can get you can have a, um, a breakout game once again from Perkins, who's disruptive, and Jane Daniels can be have the mobility and be the scrambler that he's been all season long. Look, I, I know they're the number one team in the nation, but I, I've, I've watched the Georgia games, and there have been teams that have been, that, that again were lesser teams that have been in games with them. Uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility that LSU doesn't win this game. Yeah, it's not. Um, but they are favorites. But I, I do think one thing is, does Georgia beat Georgia on defense and attack, or do right. they borrow a little bit from uh, from the last two weeks with A&M and with Arkansas and play kind of that extra defender and coverage kind of deal and basically kind of force force the slow, slow right. bleed downfield, mm -hmm. if you will, as crazy as it sounds, if Georgia does what Georgia normally does, which is attack, I actually think that plays in LSU's hands a little right. bit better. Because uh, if the offensive line can hold up, then I think you may have a chance. Because yeah. they still do the drop eight in coverage. Man, Jaden has already showed he struggled with that. So I guess we'll see how they play, and that's the chess match of the game. But I think they got to play clean football. That's a given. Yes. And then defensively, it's not just tackling. Well, I think they got to force some turnovers right. as well. Sean, you, I mean, you just look at that. I mean, 39 scholarship players, 12 players from the portal, 15 signees in the 2022 class, which, again, is the nucleus of what this team has done in terms of, again, getting the nine wins, winning the SEC West. Uh, by the way, Georgia, full of five stars. Yeah. Guys that will be playing in the NFL next year. Oh, yeah. Okay, and that's what they're going up against on, on, on Saturday. Uh, with that said, uh, I mean, I wish them a lot of luck. They play a clean game. I think they got a chance. A chance. Uh, not a great chance, but a chance. Right. Uh, I, I start with, can they cover? Yeah, they can cover. 
Uh, can they win the game? Yeah, I think there's a path to victory there. Um, but make no mistake about it, Georgia's favorite for a reason. And if they win that game, I won't be surprised. Right, right. Georgia, I'm talking about. Yep. All right, let's, um, let, let's go to the Saints, reluctantly. 13-0 uh, shutout. San Francisco, you were there. Uh, first shutout since the Hasslet era, going back to, again, 2001 uh, season. Oh, I remember that game. It was, was, it was in Janu I remember, yeah, January 2002. Um, that's the longest active street in the NFL that was broken. Um, Saints offense non-existent between the 20s. Um, I thought the defense really, uh, again, stepped up and had the energy and played well. But two fumbles from Kamara, um, the, the penalties, the false starts. I mean, Ramshef's got a false start and, and a holding penalty. Uh, Lutz missing the 48-yard field goal. Oh, and then, then again, just the... You know, it seems like every week we're questioning Carmichael on his game plan and then his adjustments within the game that we're just not seeing. And I know we were spoiled by Sean Payton, but, you know, throwing the ball four straight times in the, in the end zone, that, 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 that pass to uh, Taysom in the end zone, which, again, that's just not – he doesn't catch passes like that. No. Why put him in that position? You broke the film down. Tell us what you saw. Okay, first of all, I think it's low-hanging fruit to go after Carmichael. I really do because I felt like the plan of attack against that defense was the correct one. I, and they moved the ball. They did. The second the half, 20s. they moved the ball. Um, could you imagine, though, you get the ball, first half, get a first down, your best player fumbles on the fourth play from scrimmage. It's such a deflating thing. Right. And it deflated Kamara. You saw his body language yes. the rest of the game. And it just it, it's something that always sticks with me whenever I see it because Sean Payton was so big on body language. And when I see that, that that's what happened. I mean, I, I still don't think 49ers played well. I still think the Saints defensively did more than enough to win that game, except take the ball away. My goodness, take get a takeaway. Right. Please. Tyron Matthew tipping the ball. That, tipping the ball. The yeah, interception is uh, called back. The, the ball that's tipped the, in the air, I think it was on Yamada, mm -hmm. and just kind of floats in the air for like an eternity and somehow finds the ground. Right. Um, please create a takeaway. Paulson Debo had his hands on a right. uh, ball in the end zone, two of them uh, in the end zone. Uh, I thought the style of game that they anticipated, they had planned for, and if you just finished, Will Lutz, can we have a reasonable discussion about Will Lutz now? Yeah, I think that's we have six, to. That's six missed field goals. Come on. Like, he was Mr. Reliable, and right. he's not. He was, like, 73%. No. Right. Like, I mean, I think there's a reasonable discussion to be had there because if he makes that field goal, I was in the stadium, you can kind of, right. all right, we're, we're okay right, right now, but he misses it. It's like all that work for nothing. And then you get the, the first uh, trip to the red zone, Kamara fumbles. And, you know, I broke down the film last night. You know, that was the right play to go to Kamara. Kamara kind of catches it and turns inside. Right. The defender's there. If he catches it and turns outside, he walks into the end zone. Kind of gets held up. It was a beautiful play by the safety. Really Hit was. the ball right on the on the on the nose and ball pops up. Jawan Johnson has. It's just like we're watching the 2022 Saints right here with this play right here. And then the second one, that was where I criticized Carmichael. I didn't mind four pass plays, although I do think you could have maybe did a pass formation and run out of it. Mm -hmm. I did not like the personnel. I did not like it's, and because the throw to Taysom Hill was perfect. Mm -hmm. It was right on the money. Right. That's exactly how you make that throw. It's exactly how you make that read. And it's exactly how you execute that play. Right. But you got the wrong personnel wrong in. That's Jarvis Landry. Right. I'll even – Chris Olave. Right. I, Taysom catches underneath throws mm -hmm. and catches and runs with it. The first play of the game, a little hook route on the yes. outside. A corner route from the number three slot to the opposite corner is not his play. Mm -mm. So that's, that's where I um, criticize Carmichael. And then, you know, it just – when bad teams – Get bad luck. It, it, it's a formula. It's, it's, it stood the test of time. Bad teams, bad luck. There were probably five or six penalties that didn't get called in that yeah. game. That really, when I went back and watched, it, it didn't jump out right away. But when I went back and watched, like, oh my God, Jarvis Landry got held like three or four times. Mm -hmm. but that's what happens when you're having a bad season. That's right. You, it, for some reason, the breaks don't go you your know, way. Well, well, we've seen in the past where the Saints were were very good and they got the breaks, but mm -hmm. they made the breaks. I look at the Lutz thing, and it's almost a microcosm of the of the whole team this year. The lack of concentration, mm -hmm. um, uh, the lack of a fear factor of, of again, if I mess up or I miss or if I don't do my job, that I'm not going to get the wrath of Peyton when I head to that sidelines. The accountability. Now we've heard that all week long. Accountability. Okay. Um, I mean, <laughs> you got five games left in the season. You're still talking about accountability. I mean, really. Um, and, it, you know, it, it leads me to, look, first of all, I want to give some credit where credit's due. Caden Ellis has played well. You'll Four, see a film study from him uh, game night. He, he played fantastic. I mean, 14 tackles, 12 solo. He's been all over the field. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, Especially when you consider the 49ers targeted him. Right. In other words, they targeted him by trying to get him 
to, to get his eyes fooled. Right. And he never did. And right. it was, it was, I, I couldn't believe when I watched right. the film how good he played. Vaughn, as much as, as yeah, he, had, he played well. He too. played well. Uh, Adebo, once again, uh, again, healthy, playing well. Taylor, playing well. Did you know the Saints had the top 10 defense in pass defense? I did I not until I eight, saw your program yeah, last eighth, night. I looked at it, I, was, I did a double take because they were so bad in the secondary right. early in the season. All of a sudden, it's coming together. This is without Marshall Lattimore right. the last couple right. games. And P.J. Williams goes out, and then yeah. you got to bring Harris in. And, of course, you know, that's a disaster. You know, it seems like yeah. each and every – each and every. I mean, had one good play, and then that was it. Yeah. Um, when you look at this team, uh, with everything that's going on, and I even hate to say it, they win on Monday night – they're, they are clearly back in it. That's what I'm saying. So we can sit here and talk about bad luck, bad teams. Usually bad teams aren't in it at 4-8 and eight in December. Um, so you got a chance here. How bad you've played, you got a chance. But to me, D.A. has got to make – he's got to turn the corner when it comes to going out and winning the game. Right. Fourth and two from the 42-yard line, go for it, please. Yeah. Or kick the field goal. Even though Lutz has been struggling. At this point, throw caution to the wind. I, I don't understand. You can't be concerned. I don't understand. You did it against the Rams. Look what happened. Right. Like, you, you're past the point of Be coaching. aggressive. Yeah, at this point, there is no reason to be cautious. Right. If it's on the call sheet, call it. If it's there, it, go make the play. Mm -hmm. That's just where I think he's got to turn the corner. I talked about it on the radio show this week. I've talked about it on this program as well. Um, look, Peyton is on everything, every show that's out there right now. He is politicking for another job. He's making it clear that he wants to coach next year. Um, it's almost ag nauseum, i got to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, it's starting to get annoying. It really is yeah, starting yeah. to get old. It really, i just got to be honest with you. It's getting old. Um, even his comment this week about uh, possibly going to a draft lottery. Okay? Uh, I mean, just, uh, just you know. Just, <laughs> he invented football, I guess. Uh, enough. Enough. <laughs> with that said, He's going to get a job, yeah, yeah. okay, whether it's uh, wherever it's going to be. Um, I've said it. We've talked about it. Mickey Loomis has to make a decision here. Is he going to voluntarily kick himself up uh, in, in, in the organization, uh, uh, you know, create a position for him where, where he's over both franchises, keeping a Jeff Ireland, keeping a Kai Harley? Because if he doesn't, they're coming in and they're going to poach the best. They're going to take Kai Harley, uh, 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 Kai Harley. They're going to take Jeff Ireland. They're going to take the best coaches off this staff. Uh, he's going to poach, again, the players that he can get to be able to go wherever he's going to go. Do you anticipate something like that happening in the offseason? Because, again, if not, I, I see these guys gone. Well, see, you're, you're a couple steps ahead. Um, first off, he's got to get a job. Uh, right. There has to be a job that's going to be open that he's going to want to take. I know we're all pointing to the Chargers. Right. What if they make a run? Mm -hmm. And they make a run deep into the playoffs. I guess we don't know. Right. I think it's three teams. It, Chargers. Uh, 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 the Broncos are one. And then uh, well, uh, I, I, um, Arizona. Arizona. Which I, what I, about I, Chicago? Native of, native of Chicago. I mean, Naperville. Yeah, but that's a first-year guy. I, the reason why I said the Broncos were the right. first-year guy is because it's a new owner. I don't think that owner hired him. Right. Okay. Um, so, eh, yeah, I, I don't know about the Chicago thing, but I could see the, the mm -hmm. connection why he would want to, but I, I don't know if that job would be open. Mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I, I think the Arizona job, I don't, I, don't, I don't think he's in love with Kyler Murray. Right. Um, so I, it could happen, but I don't, I don't know that's a guarantee. He might want to trade all, Kyler Murray. To me, if I were ranking him, I would say Chargers, yep. Broncos, okay. and then maybe a mystery team somewhere because there's always going to be a surprise well, fire the Saints somewhere. don't want him in the NFC, number one. The one if he's in the NFC, the price goes up. Right. Um, so let's just – for your argument, sure. he takes a job. Yeah, then I think the Saints have got to fight like the you-know-what to keep their core guys. Uh, I think Kai is more of a Mickey guy, so I think he probably remains loyal. Okay. I don't think it's a guarantee. You know, Sean Payton can, can, can recruit you, and sometimes he can work his That's magic. Right. Jeff Ireland is a Parcells guy, That's right. and he's a Payton guy. So, And he's a guy that, frankly, the, the, the talent – Right. Like that, that, that's coming in over his last drafts, that's on right, him, right. and the rest of the league mm -hmm. knows it. And you know, if Peyton goes somewhere, he's going to want his talent guy. What about Parrington, again, uh, uh, the pro personnel guy as well? And that could be one. Uh, he's the pro person. He replaced, that was a Terry Fontenot, mm -hmm, who went right. on to be the uh, mm -hmm. Atlanta Falcons uh, GM. He's a I, I, New Orleans. I think that's all possibilities once Peyton settles somewhere. Mm -hmm. Let's see where he settles. But if that does happen, if you're Mickey, I mean, you you got to basically put a fence around that organization. Be like, right. listen, listen. <laughs> my guys are my guys. But if, if it means, 
I got to step out of the way. And so, be it. and it, honestly, you can't do this last minute, though. Right. Sean. This has to be in the works now. Look, they, we and I talked this before we came on the show today. They knew this day was coming where they were going to have to pay the consequences of kicking the cap down the road, and it's coming, and it's coming maybe a little quicker than they thought it was. Uh. Okay. With that said, they maybe they didn't see Peyton bailing on them, whatever. But you have to the be reason they're the best here. is because of Peyton, and now Peyton's going to be another team right. while, while the Saints and, and, left with the Bills. Exactly. <laughs> well, he left them. He left them yeah. in a lurch, yeah. and he's going to come in the and, and on he's going to poach. He's, he's going to poach the best that you have. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I think he has to be proactive here, at Mickey I Loomis. I think he is. I, I do, because um, I I know part of the plan, or at least part of the thought process when they traded last year to get the two picks last mm -hmm. year was they always felt like Peyton would be back after a year right. and they were able to get a first round pick. By the way, if he somehow ends up sitting out, worst case scenario for the because right. I think the price goes down right. if he sits out for another two years, year, right. another year. So uh, I think they were always banking on Peyton getting back after a year. Absolutely. And you know, it, it always seemed like a decent relationship between the two sides. So uh, Peyton wouldn't try to, you know, mess over the Saints, and the Saints wouldn't try to mess over Peyton. I guess that's on the surface how it would how it would look. But look, when it gets business, right. business, Peyton's not, not going to want to give it, up a first round pick. Well, see, and that's why I, it all makes sense for the Chargers because I think right. the Chargers would probably settle in somewhere around 18, 19, 20, right. low twenties, and they have a roster. They have a loaded roster yes. with an in in your prime in his prime quarterback, which is all Peyton ever and wants to do. And running the Peyton system with Joe Lombardi as the offensive coordinator. Yeah. Right, it's ready made. It's it's it is. So that's always been the, the that's always and it's Los Angeles player. and it's L.A. He's got that that, that right. star kind of infatuation thing. So yeah, I think. That could be a, that, that's something to watch because it's not just him taking the job and the Saints getting the first round pick. It's who is Sean going to want? Because right. Sean's going to want to go. He's going to call his guys back up and be like, "All right, I'm back in the game." That's right. Oh, absolutely. So who's coming with me? Right. I mean, again, <laughs> and, and, and again, the Saints. The best coaches on this coaching staff are going to be getting those calls. And, and again, if you're not elevating them to another position, and the thing is, continue. I'm sorry. No, no, that's no, right. no, no I, I, I was I was thinking of a rule in my head, but I'm not 100 percent sure right. it's a rule. So I'm I'm, not, I'm gonna say. Well, I figured that again, even though a coach is under contract, unless you're moving them to a coordinator position mm -hmm. or something like that, they have to be able to go if they're going if they're leaving for a better position. Yeah, and I think there's so, something that if you block an interview, you have to there 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 could be like a rule where right. you may have to promote. I, I don't know. I, yeah, I, no, I, no, I don't know. Right. They have fact, to promote. But, yeah. You have to promote. I'm yeah. almost positive of that. So again. Yes, the season is, is going on. You're not out of it yet, right. mathematically. But you have to be looking a couple steps ahead here at what's going to be happening this offseason. Well, if you're Mickey, I mean, right. I, what else do you do? Because, I mean, it's not just that. I mean, we say it every year with salary cap. But, man, I looked at it again. I'm like, right. man, like, I don't know how, you, how else you do it. Like, you got, it, the, they'll, they'll figure it out. They always do. But, but they I, have, I think this – but. The, 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 the style they've gone right. with has worked until it hasn't worked. Now right. it hasn't worked. So now you're just stuck with bloated contracts and, and losses. You have restructured every contract that you can restructure. Period. The end. There's yeah. just no more yeah. restructuring. Now, again, as you get rid of these players, their, their um, dead money is going to be coming due. The thing is, again, Ooh. can you, you – I don't know if you could trade a player at the draft to be able to pick up draft picks and, and then be able to spread that cap hit over two years. I think that's a post-June 1st situation, and yeah. I don't think you could do that with a trade, you know, with, 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 with an ongoing player. But I do see some of the stars on, these, on this team ending up being traded elsewhere. If not by, by the end of this next season, the following season, uh, because it's yeah. a cap implications. Yeah, and, and honestly, when you have a high payroll or you're right. over the cap, and you're coming off of a 13 and three season, that's one thing. Right. But if you have a high payroll, and you're coming off of whatever this season's going to end up being, that means you get, this is they were going to keep doing it until they're forced right. to change. That's right. And guess what? I think that I think they're going to be forced to change this. And year. Oh, by the way, they still need an NFL quarterback. That's it. I mean, that, that's it. I mean, they they still need a quarterback. NFL quarterback. They still need a quarterback. Organizationally, they're they're always going to be swimming. Right. They're always going to be kind of trying to find themselves right. unless until they find I mean, that guy again. I mean, okay. we looked at, at other teams for years and years and years when Breeze was here, of teams drafting quarterbacks over and over again and failing. And and again, you don't want to get into that scenario where you're in that merry-go-round where again you're giving up number one pick after number one pick looking for that quarterback that you can't find. Yeah, and you know. Given what could happen this year in the first round, given what's available, I, I, I'm falling out of love with this quarterback mm -hmm. class coming out. Oh, uh, have you? Because some people say it's deep. Uh, I I know it's deep in terms of numbers and, and grades, but 
I got to do some more research on it because I'm, I'm getting a little cold yeah. on it a little bit. But they don't have a first round pick yet. So, but if they do have a first round pick, they're going to be kind of in that next tier. Yeah. Will Levis, Hendon Hooker type yeah. uh, player. But they always move up. We always know that they, they always move up when right. the draft comes. So, it's going to be an interesting it's off season. Have, it's, it's something to be an think about though, season. Sean, going forward. It's one of the reasons why they are where they are now. The constant moving up. Packaging picks. It really is the reason why they got a void in the middle of the roster. Look, I just went through the young players they got mm-hmm. that, that, are, that are really playing well for them. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they need a, they need an influx of some more young players. And look, they drafted well. They drafted. They I know have. some people have been kind of back. I, I went through the kind of the list of guys that have really been good mm-hmm. players that Ireland's drafted. It's like it's like 12 of them yeah. over the last what you know, six or seven years. That's a lot when right. you talk about. The hit, the normal right. hits and misses in the on draft On top class. of 17, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're talking about the 17 class. 18 is kind of whatever. And then you right. talk about 19, getting a guy like Caden Ellis, right. you know, that type. So, I mean, they've drafted well. So And they've developed. And those, those, drafted, those. developed. Right. You may have to use that model next year. That, right. that, that, that's, that's your additions. It's not mm-hmm. spending big or it's not, you know, doing that's the other things is. you want to do. I think fans got to get used to it. All right. The, what they need to really get used to is what's going on with Smoothie King Center. Uh, this team is dynamite, mm-hmm. okay? And I told you when, when, the, when the season started, uh, they have the talent to be a top-four team in the West. Uh, they should win the Southwest Division. Uh, they are right on track. They're 13-8 and eight right now. They're 7-3 and three in the second 10, 1-0 oh in the third 10. We're going to be breaking it down like Willie, uh, like Willie Green does. Last night, 126-108 to 108 over the Raptors. Had a 31-point lead. They let it slip away. And then Zion what became Zion, who has been playing mm-hmm. terrific basketball. In the last four games, two t- two over 30-point performances. Last night, 33-10, five assists, four steals, uh, two blocks. I got to tell you, this kid Daniels is going to be a player. 14 <laughs> pl- uh, points last night, nine assists, eight rebounds. Murphy, of course, 26 and five. I said this on the radio show last week, and, and I said it again early this week. I think this is the best bench in the NBA. Bar none. And you look at now how those guys have had to step in mm-hmm. with Brandon Ingram out, CJ CJ McCollum out. Brandon Ingram and, and, and Zion have missed a quarter of the season each so far. Yeah. And this team has still persevered through it because of the depth of this team. It really is deep. I mean, you saw but when I when I saw the stat line for Dyson Daniels, I was like, I was like, wow. They were not expecting that. No. At least not this early. Not, not this in early. his rookie year. Come on. And there is it eight wins out of their last eleven? Mm-hmm. Is that is that so. correct? Yeah. Something like that? Mm-hmm. So it's right where I thought because I thought the first couple of weeks of the season they were kind of finding their footing. They were back and forth with injuries, and I was a little disappointed that they weren't doing a little bit better when when loss wise. But the last, we're just into the the first quarter of the season is now done. Right. So they, they're into and it, they started playing their best basketball towards the end of the first quarter. What does that mean? It's coming together. And, you know, they're having to adapt a lot with the constant flux of who's in and who's out of the lineup. And I know that you're going to get that in the NBA because there's so many games. But nonetheless, they're finding different ways to win. They're leaning on different guys to have to win. They're trusting different guys, finding ways to win. I, I, look, I'm not a, I don't know every roster in the NBA, but I, it'd be hard-pressed to find a deeper, a deeper team I'm telling uh, than you. the Pelicans right now. A- Antonio Daniels said that last night, I believe, that he thinks it's the deepest team in the NBA, and I agree. I mean, I think it's the best bench in the NBA, but when you look at it, you know, from 1 to, t- to 12, uh, I mean, again, they are. I mean, again, you know, even Car- even Temple played last night, and he's played the last couple games. And that's a guy, again, that was at the end of the bench, mm-hmm. and, and he has played well. But, again, the maturation of Murphy and Jones and Alvarado, Marshall, and now Daniels, you know, again, these, these are guys that, that – you know, that either been drafted or guys that, that they brought in as, as un- undrafted free agents. And these guys have paid dividends. And they're di- well, what does that tell you? Scouting, they're finding the right guys. Right. Coaching, they're developing the guys they have. They're coaching them up. Yep. Coaching them up. And then you have top end stars. Zion looked like a star last night. Zion, oh, yeah. Zion looked, looked like a star. He was a dude. He looked, like a, he, looked, he looked like a star last right. night. A superstar. Brandon Ingram, who I think is the best pure basketball player on the team. Mm-hmm. CJ McCollum, who I think is the best leader on the team. Mm-hmm. This, is, this, is some, this is some good times no, it is. Uh, for the Pelicans right and, now. And, and Willie Fritz. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And Willie Green, who has been an incredible coach. Yeah. And look, I hate to knock Dennis Allen, but that's what you're looking for. You're looking to get another Willie Green here, like what they did. With, Willie Green is kind of the second coming of Peyton for the, for the Pelicans here. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I look. Uh, I think the Saints have to make a move. I don't think they're going to make a move, but I think that's what you have to – you have to look at what happened with Van Gundy and what you did and, and again, how this really catapulted this team going forward. It'd be interesting to see if they do that with, 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 um, with Allen, although I don't think it's going to happen. No, I, I don't think it's going to happen because I, I think if he wins – I actually feel good about the game Monday night. 
be honest with you. Uh, I, I think as long as he wins a couple of more games, right. I think he's safe. He's going to get one more year because I think Mickey – it's never been – at least on the football side of operations, when the Bensons have been taken over to, to quick triggers when it comes to firings. No. It, it never has been. Mm -hmm. I don't see that happening. I do I do see a major shakeup on the staff happening, right. and I do see uh, perhaps a different approach because I, I kind of feel like they've been coaching Sean Payton's team yep. without him. That was fine to do the continuation thing, the Bill Walsh to George Seifert thing, whatever, however you want right. to call it. It just hasn't panned out. So you got to change your approach. And Dennis Allen has to take more ownership of, yep. of this team, this right. current team. So I, I think that's what's ultimately going to happen. But I, what I said to you last night on the radio is I don't think he has a third year if he has a second bad year. Yeah. I think that's where the buck stops. No, I agree. I want to throw in again Nance and Graham, who played very, very well for this team off the bench. And, of course, uh, you know, a lot of guys playing more minutes now because of the injuries, but they have not missed a beat. And that tells you yeah. something. You know, the defense is there. When they move the basketball, okay, when, when they give up, the, again, the, the good shot for the great shot, when guys are willing to be able to pass the basketball one, two, three times down, when, they get on, when they get on the offensive side of the court, uh, that's where they flourish. And then, of course, the ability to play de strong defense and run. Th this team has it all. What, what happens when, they all, when they're all healthy at the same time? A lot of guys, a lot of guys don't get to play. What you happens? Know what? I said this being a season. I'd rather have that. You don't play. You don't play guys. You play your starters twenty something minutes. That's what you do, and you, you keep them so they're fresh for for for, for the playoffs. Yeah. You know, you don't have to go guy. You don't have to go thirty minutes with a guy. That's what you do. Again, you continue to use that bench, and and you lessen the uh, the the, uh, uh, the 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 wear and tear on, on your starters till you get to that last quarter of the season in, in, in into the playoffs. And that's what you do. I want to mention one more thing before we get out of here. Uh, Regis Pro Gray, now two-time world champion, mm -hmm. uh, knockout over the weekend. Uh, and, of course, a lot of people don't realize, you know, this was the boxing mecca at one time. Oh, it really was, yeah. <clears throat> Here in New Orleans, okay? Even when I was growing up, it was a boxing mecca. Uh, but even before that, it was horse racing and boxing, long before it was professional sports. And, of course, collegiate sports. Regis Progray, again, two-time world champion. Congratulations to him. Good. I mean, look, boxing was a big-time sport here back right. in the day. It absolutely was. No doubt about it. And, of course, it, it gets kind of, with everything that goes yeah. on, it kind of gets under the rug it here. It really does. But I really wanted to mention that yeah. because that's huge for, huge for this city. Uh, Sean, you like the Saints on, on Monday night? I actually do. It's going to be close. It's going to be a kind of a, an, a, I think it could be an ugly game with some turnovers and some takeaways. Or I don't think it's going to be great, but I do think the Saints match up probably a little bit better than we realize. I, I do like the Saints on. Right. How, about, how about Tulane UCF? I'm going Tulane. I like the green. I like right. I like the greenies. In okay. This how about um, um how about uh, LSU Georgia? You know who I want to win. Oh, know. You know who I want come to on. win. <laughs> I mean, come on. Goal, come on. Yeah, but I, I'm going to go Georgia. Okay. Uh, SLU against, against Sanford. It's going to be a tough game. They've only lost to Georgia this year. They're a pretty good team. Uh, Much better team. They're, they're, yeah. Okay. Uh, line up. Let's go SLU. Why go. not? <laughs> and, of course, finally against Southern Jackson State. I think it's going to be tough on Southern. Yeah. Jackson State is a juggernaut That's this a juggernaut year. juggernaut no right now. Uh, as always, appreciate yeah. you, you being with us. Folks, don't forget, uh, after further review, review blog, uh, also, again, um, uh, the Overtime Podcast, which, again, I think should be an award-winning podcast. Uh, Sean Vazan, of course, and all the shows over at Fox 8 Sports. Thanks for being with us today. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, there's a QR code that's up on your screen right now. You can click on that. It'll take you right to the WLATV YouTube page or to, or to my um, website, ericastro.com. Uh, there you'll be able to see all the opportunities for you to, be able to catch our show. We are so blessed with so many rebroadcasts of the show and also, again, on the YouTube page of WLE. And, of course, that is on my social media platforms as well. So, again, uh, thanks to those that, that watch us on a, on a weekly basis. And uh, no matter how you do it, uh, whether on WLATV, Pelican Sports Television, or or again on the YouTube page. We appreciate it very, very much. We also, again, appreciate our underwriters who, uh, who make this, pro this program happen. Don't forget, you can also check me out on the radio, 106.1 FM. Uh, that's weekdays 4 to 6. Uh, and, of course, as always, we thank our guest, Sean Rosanna of Fox 8 Sports. Also, the WLA production staff who do a fantastic job in putting on this program. Today, Ron Yeager uh, st sitting in for, again, the, the, uh, the maestro, William Hill, who's out for the day. Uh, Jim Dotson, Logan Rafia, and also Alex Chacon. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week for another edition of Inside New Orleans Sports. For Sean Rosanna, I'm Eric Asher. See you next week.